Hi, welcome to Elizabeth Viana's blog regarding seeking credibility in news sources. Credibility of news sources is very important if you want to be informed with the most accurate information you can find. In this blog, I'm going to analyze three randomly selected stories to demonstrate how to distinguish if they meet certain news worthy criteria. In other words, if they meet the eye vein test, and I'm going to explain what that is in just a moment. The I in eye vein stands for independent. Is the story independent of personal opinions? Or um, is there any agenda? The M stands for multiple sources. Are there multiple sources in the story, or is it just one source? The V stands for verifies. Does it provide evidence, or does it assert assumptions and opinions? Then you have to ask yourself, are the sources authoritative and informed, or are they uninformed? And lastly, N stands for named. Are the sources named or unnamed? If all of this applies to, to your story, then chances are it's, it's newsworthy information to accept. I'm going to start with story one. Story one, story one is from ABC News 2010. Um, the title is called Concerned that Terror Teams Have Selected Targets Ready to Strike. In this video story, there were two U.S. reporters, I'm sorry, there were two reporters asked questions regarding terrorism, what they thought and what is to come. Weighing the in, if they were independent or self-interested, um, the U.S. reporter Pierre Thomas was more of an independent type report. Uh, the other reporter was Lama Hassan, uh, reporting from London. Um, her report was independent to a certain extent. Um, there were a couple comments made giving her opinion, which made it more on the side of self-interested. Uh, she stated, for instance, she stated her own observation as business as usual. When she flew from New York to Heathrow Airport in response to the travel alert mentioned by the ABC News correspondent. Let's talk about the sources. There were two sources of information, the two reporters, with different opinion about the level of terrorism threat. When we talk about verifies or does the story assert, uh, Pierre Thomas asserts his information but with no mention of verified sources. For example, uh, he mentions a suspected German radical claimed Al-Qaeda threatened Germany, France, and Great Britain. Uh, he didn't say the name. Um, also, he said that sources sources uh, say that they don't expect U.S. threat level to be raised. Lama Hassan, reported from London, uh, seemed to have asserted her opinions throughout the report. For example, when referencing her location at a park near Big Ben, uh, she stated places like this that attract crowds can be potential targets. Another example is when she spoke on behalf of Europeans by stating, but other European countries are taking precautions, then went to mention Sweden, Poland, and Paris. She mentioned this information without any reference to as to where she obtained the, the information. When analyzing if the reporters were authoritative and informed versus uninformed, uh, Pierre Thomas seemed to be more authoritative and informed from a governmental uh, department and law enforcement point of view. He mentioned um, information of a suspected radical. He talked about the U.S. Department and the FBI. Uh, Lama Hassan re report was uninformed. She didn't have any information from governmental agencies um, as Mr. Thomas did. As far as named versus unnamed um, sources, uh, the reporters, obviously, we had their names, but they did not really give um, the names of their sources, or at least Ms. Hassan did not. So credibility to their expertise and professional affiliation was not provided. Uh, that was a concern. Um, so in my opinion, the report didn't provide verifiable evidence about where the concerned terrorism threats took place, um, just that travelers should be on guard when traveling to Europe. So this video left me, left me with some questions. Um, first of all, who, who, who are PR 
Pierre Thomas and Lama Hassan. Who did they work for? What is their profession? What is their expertise in this matter? So that brings me to the conclusion that um, this video overall does not qualify as news because it was a combination of independent and self-interest reporting, uh, not consistent reporting at all. Um, one reporter was not authoritative and informed. Multiple sources were mentioned, but the names of the organizations or agencies weren't provided. Uh, the report asserted a lot more information than verified. Same criteria for story two. This was about Walmart. Um, they were announcing an, a food label initiative uh, named Good For You in 2012. This was an independent report um, with health and finance conscious um, mothers and other consumers in mind. The multiple sources provided a fair balance of information of health conscious co consumers. Although the statements made by both Walmart employees uh, were mostly claims um, and information, uh, they did provide links at the end of the video leading consumers to research further details on the claims regarding the Health Food Initiative. Um, both demonstrated authorita authoritative and informed as uh, reporters. Uh, one was Andrea Thomas. She demonstrated her expertise as a Walmart's Senior Vice President of Sustainability. Um, and Phil Keen was knowledgeable about the, the initiative that Walmart was um, implementing. So in my opinion, um, it, makes, it, it, it makes great sense and it's ap appealing to health conscious consumers. Um, I think the report was very informative. Both speakers in the video were authoritative and informed. The only questions I had were, um, who is Phil Keen? They did not uh, provide his um, they did not provide his title. Um, also, I was wondering which experts are they consulting with to establish their key criteria, criteria for healthy food, um, which they were going to put on their labels. Also, who are the manufacturers they are to partner with um, to reduce the sugar and sodium in packaged foods? So in this case, um, this this video clip was um, made perfect sense. It gives good information on Walmart's efforts in customer satisfaction and their sensitivity towards um, consumers' health. In addition, uh, there's a website shown at the end of the video which shares Walmart's um, initiatives and uh, their, their initiatives uh, corporate-wide, nationally, and globally. Um, to me, that's transparency, and I, and I really like that. Third story um, was titled, Probe of Virginia Rocket Blast Begins, a Space Station Supplied. Uh, this was published by the Chicago Tribune in 2014. The story comes from an independent source that publishes online worldwide news. Uh, there were multiple sources. They provided comments with a fair balance of opinions about the explosion and what needs to be investigated. Uh, uh, the story verified uh, information from NASA, um, those who were involved in the project. They provided a video clip of the actual explosion, uh, providing real evidence of what was involved, and uh, they talked about the next steps uh, toward correcting the errors in progress. However, the story asserts information about investments, shares, and NASA's contracts, as well as Russian engines, um, and the monetary loss of associated uh, that were associated with the explosion. Uh, all were un unverified. Um, they were mentioned, but they didn't give their sources where they obtained that information. Although I have to say that the sources were um, authoritative and informed, um, well informed actually, uh, since they were involved in the flight project with, in one way or another. Uh, then there were some sources regarding the explosion, um, such as Antares program manager Mike Pinkston, executive vice president, mission uh, director Frank Culberson of Orbital Science Corp. They named a few people um, in here that and um, provided quotes too. Uh, however, the sources weren't named pertaining to the discussion on, as I mentioned before, the NASA contracts, the Russian engines, and the monetary loss associated with the explosion. So in my opinion, this story was partially credible. Um, with regard to witnessing the explosion, the preliminary assessment to the damage and the loss, as well as current assessment of supplies at the space station. 
I did have a couple of questions. Uh, where did the statistical, monetary, and investment information come from? Where did the information on the technicalities of the engines come from? Uh, who's the source for information regarding Russia, the relationship with Russia? Although the um, article seemed to be informative, um, it's my opinion that the article didn't really qualify as news. I perceived the second half of the article as unverified facts. And that concludes my vlog. Um, I'd like to give you some helpful hints on evaluating credibility of news sources. Um, find out who the, art, who the author is. Um, what is the reputation? Use Google. Um, you, can, um, also, you can also check out sources through easywhois.com um, as recommended by communications critic, writer, and teacher Howard Reinhold. Also, find out if the claims are supported by named sources. Um, search those sources to verify the claims. Um, a, a quick tip, um, use factcheckedorg.org, or for your information in the political arena, use factcheck.org. Also, I would recommend um, to know and look for the difference between news and opinion in a news source. And finally, as recommended by founding dean of School of Jur Journalism, Howard Schneider, Look for the three news attributes. Those are verification, independence, and accountability, meaning the writer or the reporter is responsible for his or her work. Thank you for watching my blog.